Alzheimer's disease is diagnosed by a physician. After a physician sees a patient, they oftentimes order a variety of tests. But first, they're going to talk to the patient and talk to the caregiver or loved one that can give them the clinical history. If a person comes into my office and is experiencing progressive, short-term memory changes over time, and maybe they've had some other symptoms like changes in mood or behavior or problems with sleep, a person with progressive, ongoing, short-term memory loss that has, for example, a family history or other family members with Alzheimer's disease too, that's a situation where it's suggestive that that person may be experiencing the earliest phases of Alzheimer's disease dementia. So to confirm this or to figure out if it's something else, we first order a variety of tests. There, first, we do blood tests. We look at thyroid levels. We look at B vitamin levels. We look at other blood tests, which may clue us in that something else is going on to cause the memory loss. About 5% of the time, we can find a medical cause of memory loss. And if we can find that cause and give a treatment, then the person will get better and the person doesn't need to go down a different path. However, in many other cases, or really in fact the majority of cases, we're gonna need more studies, more investigation. And oftentimes we're gonna order a brain image. In our practice, we order most frequently an MRI or a magnetic resonance imaging of the brain, which is a brain scan which gives finely tuned details into the brain structure. Other people may order a CAT scan or CT scan, also known as a computerized axial tomography. So all this means is we first order blood tests, we then order a picture of the brain. And if we look at the picture of the brain and we see that the size of the brain is smaller than it should be, or the area of the brain that's responsible for memory called the temporal lobe, or even in more detail, the hippocampus. The hippocampus is the memory center of the brain that gets shrunken or smaller over time. If we can use these blood tests and then use an MRI, we can have a better sense of understanding whether or not a person has Alzheimer's. However, in the future, we're going to be continuing to use more fancy tests, more innovative tests, one called a PET scan, and another, a blood test where we can actually check for Alzheimer's disease markers in the blood.